Bonjour, everybody. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's radio network on Facebook live stream, powered by Be Live TV. I love saying that. You are watching Walking with Spirit. And um, this is a monthly show with um, three of us. And in fact, I just saw somebody pop into the lobby, into the green room. I'm here. Yep. There's Sandy Herrick. Just hang on. I'm going to get us all on here. <laughs> Just got to shift things around a little bit. There we are. We have Sandra Herrick all the way from New Hampshire. <laughs> There's Sandy. And then we also have Denise Iwana Francisco. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and of course, me, Neshi Lokatz. So welcome to the show, everybody. Get our names up there so people know who we're at. Just in case there might be one or two people, like I was teased, that don't really know us. And show our names a little bit. <laughs> How are you ladies doing tonight? Good. Good. Wonderful. Hi. Hi. I haven't seen you in a while, has she? I know. I know. And welcome, everybody, to the show, <laughs> the live stream show. And welcome to those people who might be watching the, the recorded show afterwards. So it's good for you to be with us. And... Uh, this is the I was wait, anticipating this all day because this is the first time the three of us are doing this live show together on Facebook. Ta -da. <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. And you know what we're doing is we're continuing our conversation that we had last month about spirit guides. And Sandy, you you actually brought the the conversation to us about um, once a spirit, always a spirit? Question mark. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and we had that started that conversation, but it, it it's it's so big that we decided that maybe we should continue that. And if I remember I right, yeah. All right, so you have to you have to um, help people remember. And we got Jen Francisco in the house. She says the power of three. <laughs> <laughs> So true. And here's one from Sandy Herrick from earlier today. Sandy, you wrote, a, what a leap we are making in connecting with your hearts and souls. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. So, Dana, do you want to do you want to take the the, uh, the lead on this one since um, you do so good at that? I want to just run buttons here. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody, wherever you happen to be around grandmother, the three of us are so happy to be with you this evening. And yeah, this is our first foray into walking with spirit, the three of us here on Be Live TV. And if you happen to be watching, if you would do us the service of liking what it is that you are seeing, and also sharing it with people, that would be fantastic so that folks know that we are live and ready to rock and roll. Tonight we're going to be talking about spirit guides and spirits and picking up where we left off last month because the subject was so well received and so many of you asked, would you continue on with that? And Sandra, as we always do when the three of us are together or when you and I are on the road to heaven. Hey, Connie, it's good to see you. Would you do us the favor of get, getting everyone into a centered space and gathering us up? So first of all, before I do that, I just want to say welcome to my home. And thank you to Neshi and Dana for producing this and bringing us to Believe TV and starting a whole new venue for us to manifest the connection to are out there in the universal orb of Star Nations Magazine and Radio. And I'd also like to say that this is one of these times for the first time that I'm not in my bathrobe. <laughs> uh -huh. Wrapped up on my pillows with my cats all around me and Bobby making dinner. So, you know, I'm like, I took a shower and uh, been working with the horse, getting horse ready all day long and and, you know, literally, Dana and I figured this out of like pushing buttons. Da, da, da. <laughs> so to be live and mainstream or live stream is such a 
energetic flow of consciousness that I want to be able to bring you all into this space that we're entering. Such a delicate touch because there is a sensationalism to it that here we are, we're visual, we're audio. Now you can feel us, you can see us, and you can kind of touch into our homes rather than just our voices. But we're also touching you at a deeper level. We're coming to you at a visual place where you see what we look like when we work. You experience our tone and our mannerisms. And so it may be a surprise to you to all of a sudden see us live. It's also a beautiful opportunity to be able to see how human we are and how energetically in tuned we are to your own humanness. Mm -hmm. And so I ask you to, when I ask you to close your eyes, to trust who we are in our space of sacred and our space of being able to bring to you this gift of sharing our spirits and our souls. And to also know that without you being there, there's no reason for us to be here. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for being there because what I do and what these ladies do is so profoundly tender and engaging and soul producing that, yes, I would like you to like us, but more, I would like you to in everything that we bring to you and find that place inside you that resonates the love and your spirit and your soul. So take a deep breath. And when I come into this space, it's a space of gratitude. It's a space of knowing that there is a space to come into without doubt, without trepidation, without even hesitation that closing your eyes brings you into the unity of that place that we are all seeking and that is the communal breath and that whether you know or don't know spirit is with you no matter what you believe or think or wonder spirit is right here always it's in our breath it's in our senses it's in our communication, and most importantly, it's in our hearts and it's our souls, and it already knows us. Spirit knows you. It welcomes you. So I ask you to join us in each of our spiritual paths and to collaborate with your own and bring us to yours. One more breath. I dedicate this energy to the healing light, to the light of the depth, the width, the space, or in the universal orbs of love. I ask that we commune within our consciousness, within the integrity of what it is that we all truly have the faith of being one with. Exhale and welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, Sandy. You. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the last time that we were all together, we were talking about spirit guides and how sometimes we outgrow spirit guides. Do spirit guides change? Do we change? Uh, we talked about animals as spirit guides. And since we, the three of us gathered, a question that seems to repeat itself to me recently anyway with clients is, are those that we love who have gone home, do they become our spirit guides? And if so, does that mean that they were ascended all along? Because they went from being, you know, Aunt Jane to all of a sudden a spirit guide leading me down the road. Is that even possible? How do you ladies feel about that? Do you, when you pass, do you have the same intellectual capacity as when you were here 
What are your thoughts about that? Or do we ascend into this greater awareness and epiphany of all wisdom? I think that's kind of the question. Well, we're going to be, we're gonna be so I kind guess. to each other. <laughs> Oh, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Sandy. Go for it. The very first time I was, I'm trying to figure out my camera and my space and all you, so I have a good angle. <laughs> you saw that Dylan just said hello to you, right? Yeah, here. here we go. You can so wait. Have, the Dylan. horses are in the backyard. Uh, Sue's horses are in the backyard. Uh, we have two uh, Mustangs back there. So when you say Dylan, it's the horse in the backyard. Now okay, we're talking so Dylan from the camping ground, Sandy. Dylan Haney. Oh, hi, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hi, baby. <laughs> yeah. Now I want an alcoholic beverage. Okay. So um, I'll look at you. <laughs> Okay, here we go. When I first was involved with learning this back in 1972, there was the beautiful moment of being brought into the space of where guides were to be found when we went into meditation. And what happened was my grandfather came to me who died a year and a half before I was born. So here I am in my early 20s, meeting my grandfather face to face for the first time. It was as looking at the two of you. There was also the validity that he had information from his heart and his soul and my DNA that he brought to me and it was proven because when I spoke to my mother about what he was doing and what he was saying, validated everything. So it wasn't a guessing game. It was like, Ma, Grandpa said, Grandpa showed me. And it, it gives me goosebumps even now. So I think what you're saying, Dana, is yes to both things. Everything's making noise here. He was wiser than he was when he was alive. He was able to love without any reserve. And he was able to give me his humanness that if, and it makes me want to cry, if he did not die, I would have had. Mm -hmm. And I really miss mm -hmm. and am sad that I didn't experience him, my physical grandfather. Spiritual grandfather, he started everything. So I really didn't miss out on something that was profound. And I'll just leave it with him for first and foremost. But there are others. Hmm. You know, and I, I, I agree to a certain extent. I think that, and I, I believe so from experience, is that when we are in a situation where we need help, we're, we're in a dire straits. And we call out, you know, I need help. Somebody, I need help. And we're usually so distraught at that point that we don't qualify it, you know. And so I believe that those spirits, those souls that were here in our family, they come to us because they love us. Of course they do. They're going to try to help the best they can. Um, and so maybe in those moments, yes, they are our guides. Um, but maybe they're not the highest vibrational being that could stick around and really help us the, the whole distance, so to speak. That's what I, I have experienced in the past. But we also, I think, have to take into consideration that um, we're, we're living in a, a time in a frequency, or Sandy would call it in an octave, that is so much higher than most people alive would have ever experienced. And so why couldn't it be possible that Auntie Jane mm -hmm. had evolved and when she crossed back into spirit, when she walked on, that she was at a high enough octave or frequency that she could, she could be a guide. 
because I truly believe that there's many, many, many light workers who are vibrating um, at a rate that is at the same rate, if not higher than the first rung of guides that they had helping them. And so isn't that how the, the what is that old saying that they all saying about um, when the student uh, surpasses the teacher? Uh-huh. You know, and I think we're there. I, I really do. I think we're there. Um, so I I am open to the possibility that Auntie Jane could be vibrating at a high enough rate that she could be an ascended master even and um, and be one of the guides. So back to you, Dana, what do you think? Well, I do believe that, uh, as both of you have said, because there are times when a relative will step through. And I also, you know, because if you're, if you're in need of something like, could somebody just give me a little insight into something here? I need a little word, I need a little help, and spirit will step through. And it could be a relative. I don't know for sure, frankly, uh, for myself, but, but we also know that there are people in our lives that are far more than what their humanity can contain or what they came here to be in human form. And so when we pass, when we pass over and we shed our physicality, and the fullness of who we are is what's left, you know, who's to say that there wasn't somebody of um, immense wisdom that came here to occupy a human body and be grandpa. And when grandpa dies, all of a sudden, he's the one to engage his granddaughter in the unfoldment of her gifts and to continue on. So like the both of you, I'm open to all of that. And I always, for myself, when I'm talking to a client who says to me that, you know, their child now comes to them to guide them, and, or perhaps a spouse comes to them to guide them, um, I believe that all of those things are possible, Mm -hmm. because I don't think that we can put limitations on the creator. Right, right. So if somebody says, well, when you're dead, you're dead, worms in and worms out, I, I, think to myself, and sometimes I say it right out loud, well, that's limiting the creator mm-hmm. by having such limiting thoughts. So yeah. I think it's all possible. Well, I'd like to requalify my grandfather in that. It's too much of an echo. Do I need to turn it down? Yes. Yeah. Hang on just a second. Let me find my buttons here. Well, you sound um, good now. You sound good now. Okay. Um, when I'm speaking about my grandfather... And to know that he was a choir, he was a choral master. He, he conducted, he made music. He was an astute musician. He was a very emotionally intelligent human being. And for him to come to me and to initiate me into my spiritual domain, I'm just talking about he and I exclusively. Mm -hmm. without even taking into consideration how many people he touched. He, when he passed away, he had over a thousand people at his funeral. So he stopped the town. So who he was to others Mm -hmm. is way more Mm -hmm. than who he is to me in that ascended quality, because he even had that ascended quality when he made music and did create the octaves and did play the um, harmonics of spirituality. And so what I feel is without a question in my mind that to me, he came to me as my grandfather but was also a very potent master because he brought to me an initiation and brought me to a threshold that if he were alive, he would have maybe walked me into a garden. But because he has passed over, he walked me into a dimension. Mm -hmm. And in that dimension, it is what the threshold brought to me that brings me to this chair even today. 
and then who he is to other people um, is without a doubt in my mind that master or elevated soul or that higher being that they would have prayed to or used his music or continue to keep their relationship. I do know about spirit, and I'm absolutely certain about this without a doubt. Each spirit and each um, entity has a unique relationship with everybody they're involved with. Mm -hmm. It's yep. exclusive. It's very intimate. So you can have something with some an entity that is the grassroots, and then somebody else can say, well, I have that entity, and it's like speaking to the universal Lord. There's the goosebumps on my goosebumps. And, <laughs> you know, so, you know and, and the generosity of the individual that started me in all this, when they took me into the journey, they even said, you know, well, maybe Jesus comes to you or a cloud comes to you or a star or color. And so how we perceive these beings is as important mm -hmm. to know that we may get the same person, but it's not yeah. to get my grandfather, but it's not the same. It's, it, it's, we journey it differently. Yeah. Yeah. As we need to, right? Todd is asking a really good question. Can you guys see that? I see, I'm, I'm seeing all this stuff down. This yeah. is very exciting. It, yeah. I have to read. <laughs> Dana's got her jazzy new glasses on, too, so she could probably see it. Yeah, so now I can see. <laughs> so, so Todd's asking, is it possible we have many levels of guides? Some may be just off the physical path, so they may be able to help with certain things and also their are maybe more spiritual guides helping us with bigger, the bigger picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When so I started channeling, I'm going to say this, Todd. Yes, 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 yes. First of all, and foremost, I want to say that when I started channeling the guides that came through me, I did not necessarily know I was introduced to them because let's face it. When we necessarily know what's out there, Hello, what's on the other side of the door? And so there were many teachers that came through me that taught the people that were sitting with me, but they taught me at the same time. Mm -hmm. So again, I'd like to really ask the question, what is the spectrum we're at now? Because I'm talking about way back in the 70s. And when I'm teaching now, the spectrum's very different. Mm -hmm. Because who I'm channeling now or who I'm speaking with now is very elevated in a very different way to calibrate with who I am now. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I was so grateful. It was a DNA familiar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that gave me my training wheels so that when other beings came to or channel through me, I had, I had an identity to be able to say, trust or this or this I listen to or this I debate with or you know because it's not I, I do not listen to a guide with just um obedience I have a conversation mm. except for Sir Charles <laughs> I'm pretty obedient <laughs> even when I converse with him qualification <laughs> Del Marie's got some stuff to say too she says my two cents and remembering what grandpa George said now, Dana, you're going to have to read the, the Lakota words here. Okay. In the future, Wakongli electricity, electricity will be a barricade for the Wochekie, the prayers. A lot of thought uh, to this regarding the energy. So, and that, that makes a lot of sense to me, too, eh? because, you know, the electricity uh, and the prayers... Um, the electrical currents that surround us and we're wrapped in, mm -hmm. now she's more well-versed in, in that particular subject matter, but we are encased in electrical current. And, you know, naturally when the thunder beings are doing what they do between earth and sky, and then you add to it uh, Mr. Edison and all of the others, 
it affects a whole lot of it, it affects a whole lot of things. It amplifies a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so this is why you would not find me living next to a great big huge power generator plant. No way. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Neshi, will you talk about that for just a moment? How electrical current affects the bridge between here and there? Yeah, it the, it can either depending on what it is, whether it's man-made, human-made or if it's natural, like the lightning. Um, it can either assist or it can be detrimental. Yeah. And um, when, this is the way I was taught, is that when the the thunder beans, when the gamishos are, are going over, that's the time to really pray. Mm -hmm. you, know, you pray for, for um, safety, of course, but you also pray for other things. Yeah. Um, that's when we give tobacco is when the storm is just starting. Um, and so you're, it's an offering saying, thank you, but it's also hear my prayer, you know? Um, now when it comes to human made electricity, that can interfere with our flow. I mean, how many people, how many people have walked through casinos <laughs> and you feel, holy crap, what was that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or airports, another good one. Or mm -hmm. airports, um, it, it can mess. It can mess with your um, your equilibrium mm -hmm. spiritually if you're not aware of it and you don't know how to ground. You don't know how to take care of that to take care of yourself. And so there's there's some people who might be just starting out on their consciously out on their path, and they run up against something like that, and um, they sometimes they literally get fried. You know. Um, and so I, to me, the man-made electrical currents are much bigger interference than the natural. And my grandpa used to say is that, um, spirit moves more freely and you can hear them mm -hmm. better between say 3 a.m. and sunrise. And I used to always wonder, why? Why is that? Why is that? And then when I asked him one time, and he says, because most humans are asleep. They're not causing all kinds of other stuff to go on. They're sleeping. And so there's there's a certain quietness so that we can actually sense and hear um, spirit a little bit better. Now, that was back in the turn of the century. Can you imagine now? Yeah, what? exactly. You know, yeah. So that's my two cents. That's a great two cents. Yeah. So uh, that know. was about 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we are in a different time, right? So <laughs> with inflation. That's yeah. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right about that, Del Marie. So, and when there's a good thunderstorm, boy, that's, I'm up and at it and walking with it and being with it because that's when spirit is really alive mm -hmm. and there are beings you know that live in that realm and visit and stop and take a little sit on the bed yeah. <laughs> walk up and down the hallway right? <laughs> yeah and i love the idea that you pointed out sandy that having guides in spirit whether they are angels or what have you uh is a conversation. It's not guru obedience to some, uh, you know what I'm saying? It has to be yeah. con conversant rather right. than, well, my guide told me to do this. And so, you know, when spirit asks you to act upon something, uh, for those of you that are thinking, but you know, there are those that teach if spirit says something, do it. Well, no, I think it comes under careful consideration, prayer, Unless you're, you know, in one of those situations where, you know, spirit says duck, like being in a car accident, that saved my head from being lobbed off, duck. But other than in those situations, to sit, be with it, pray with it, have conversation, what do you think adds to the relationship by being conversant, Sandy? The quality of have opportunity to see that you can participate with spirit mm -hmm. and that you can actually upgrade your own intelligence by bringing a certain quality of question 
that then the spirit, I'm just like arcing energy here like crazy, that the spirit then can also become aware of being able to nation or become more blunt or subtle or give me more details. There are times when I was told exactly what was going to happen. And then my conversation was like, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to. And wanna. the spirit is generous enough to say, go ahead and have your feelings. And when that's all done, you're going to be over here anyhow. And, but it, you know, but there is that time where the conversation gives you the opportunity to develop a relationship mm -hmm. and a courtesy between each other. Because spirit does want to hear our mind, does want to hear our thoughts. It wants to be, act with us rather than just say, do and be obedient. They have a respect for our intelligence and want us to grow and elevate the frequency and the electricity of our conduits. The beauty of converse, like learning how to speak on a first grade level, a second grade level, a third grade level, and then all of a sudden you're, you know, uh, how big is your vocabulary? How big is your thought process? How many definitions do you have? What many languages do you speak? And then before you know it, how do you converse with intelligence and emotion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And spirit always includes emotion. Mm -hmm. They let you feel. Mm -hmm. And they feel your conversation. They don't just intellectualize it. That, I think, is what is the beautiful grace of having spirit guides. Mm -hmm. They listen to your heart. Hmm. What's that, Neshi? I was just, I was, the thought just went through my head a couple of times is that um, when you have a conversation, right, you get to know the other being, you get to know them, and you build that relationship. And what, there's two things, is one is that we're building trust. Because yes. we're in this human body having this human experience and we have to learn how to discern who that is and why they're there. And um, the other thing is that we're the ones that are having the experience. Our guides are not having that experience. It's They're there to help us to navigate through this um, to fulfill our, our soul contract to have that soul growth and and all of that but they're not living this life we are uh -huh. and so this that's how i look at it anyway and that's how i form my questions to them when we have that conversation and i have to say that there's certain guides <laughs> that i have said i don't i don't know about that i have to take some time with this one certain guides from i'm, not, I'm not saying no but I'm not saying yes either. I need I need to sit with this for a little while. Absolutely. And then and then I get the nudges. The nudges. It's you're, you're sitting too long. <laughs> you, you have to make a decision of some sort, and then that way we can move forward with whatever it is that you decide to do or not do. Mm -hmm. So um, I I agree with you. It's it's building the relationship and building building that trust that trust. There's also the beauty of, of experiencing the quickening between the guides because there are those times with um, who am I feeling when the essence comes through because there may not be a voice. It's just like, like I can see you, Dana. I can see you, Neshi. I don't need your voice to tell me, but I see the imprint of who you are. And so with guides, it may be a cloud that, oh, there's, or the butterfly comes, or there's the smoke. And so it's also to be able to quickly have the image of our guides or the sensation of them yeah. or the tone of them so that we develop a, um, a familiar. So it doesn't have to be, who are you? Where you been? What are you doing? Do I know you? We have a friendship. Right. 
We recognize each other, right? Exactly. This is this is kind of along the lines of what Kelly Spencer is trying to say in the chat room. And it, it's kind of long. Um, basically, she's saying, would a guide ever come to you as a familiar so a person is comfortable and more open? For example, I hear my grandfather's voice and it feels like him, but it's but is it maybe not necessarily him, but the guide knows that his voice, his presence is a comfort for me. So I pay attention easier. Kelly, I have to say something to you from the bottom of my toenails. <laughs> Wait a second. Bump. <laughs> coffee and donuts. Yep, they'd be coffee. Coffee, <laughs> Fairless State University. Okay. Um, that's such an interesting statement because, number one, the question would be from me, why do you think your grandfather's voice would be channeled through someone else? Why would the guide not maybe be introduced by your grandfather so that you can befriend them? Um I'm going to ask you to really own your grandfather as your grandfather. And I have to say that right now I'm feeling like your grandfather saying to you, honey, it's me. <laughs> I ain't going to be nobody else. <laughs> and, but he may introduce you to other realms. And this brings up such a deep emotion. You're so loved by him. Trust that it's him. Mm -hmm. I've never had my grandfather's voice used by another. And, but my grandfather has introduced me to many. Mm -hmm. And sure, it's all possible. I mean, you know, it's all possible. Hmm. Ladies. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Learning to trust our gifts and our abilities to communicate with those that have shed their physical body or have never had a physical body or maybe that we've never met in person. Uh, there isn't a single speaking engagement. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Uh, that was here in the room. Oh, hello and, there. Yeah. Uh, over by my buffalo skull. I have a hochoka in this room as well. Um, so whenever well, don't you I... Don't when you had to run that area when that happened? What? Uh, don't you remember when the two of you had to run downstairs to in that area where you're sitting now to find I'm out upstairs, what that noise yeah. was? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually in my bedroom. Oh, you're in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, but Neshi and I had to go down to the Hochaka to figure out what was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this is a different one that I keep here in this room it. as well. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're looking at now. Um, hmm. Whenever I speak and when, you know, before a large group or what have you, um, I always ask my grandmothers to be present. And I have done that for decades, two decades. Uh, to ask my grandmothers to be present, Kelly. And as you know, I've not met them in physicality in this lifetime, except maybe on the day of my birth. I don't know. But I can feel, I can see them. I can feel them. And there's the feeling of, well, these are my grandmothers. There's a feeling so even if with, with or without the voice, as the ladies were saying, it's also a feeling of, well, this is grandpa. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says to me, well, you know, Dee, while you were up there talking, there were these three women that were standing behind you, and this is what they looked like. Are those your grandmothers? Because others can also feel the grandmotherly presence. And I've always asked them to be with me just to give me strength because I'm not naturally an onstage person. Mm -hmm. So we have to trust our intuition with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a big word right there, trust, because mm -hmm. um, I think the bottom line is that 
we have to trust ourselves. Yes. Right? And, and that's part of our gig here is, is to learn how to trust ourselves because as soon as we do that, we have trust for a lot of other things. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so many people in the chat room tonight. Same. I'm trying to, uh, yeah. Hi everybody. Um, I'm trying to, and it's keep scrolling. So I just wanted to kind of back up. Uh, Jocelyn, yeah, Jocelyn's in the house. She's saying hi. Hi Jocelyn. Hey, Jocelyn. Yeah. And, um, and also Tina, Tina Stevens has something to say. Hey, Tina. She says, have I, I, have an, I have an aunt who comes to me as a warm presence around my shoulders. Should I try to cue into her then by trying to connect with her somehow? I usually just revel in it and then go about what I'm doing. Good question. I would say yes, engage in conversation, Tina. You know, Auntie, what can I do for you? How are you? What is it that you'd like to share with me? If it were me, I would do that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I would also find out, take a, a, a gentle look at your Tina and feel willing comes or the comfort and the warmth comes because it feels like there's such a soothing being offered to you. What's happening with you when it happens? Um, what are you asking or what are you uh, um, consciously or subconsciously asking? And to also know that it feels like your aunt's kind of chatty, so you might as well engage. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, I want to ask you a question. I want to go back to what you were saying about inviting your grandmothers. Now, because you are tribal and you have been invited in and familyed into the tribe, um, are you saying your grandmothers from the tribe or are you saying your maternal, paternal grandfathers, grandmothers from birth? Yeah, my black grandmothers. Okay. They always, they always come in. And one of the most beautiful times of that were two years ago, I was asked to speak with uh, Anita Morjani was speaking and I was asked to open up the conference. And as I always have, I said, grandmothers, will you please be with me today? Because they're going to be a lot of people. And I got up and I, I said, gave my lecture. And there was a bit of a break between myself and Anita. And I was sitting next to my friend Darlene. And somebody plopped a book in my lap and said, um, Denise, I'm pretty sure this belongs to you. And I took it out of its wrapper. It was Val Chumney. She dropped it in my lap. I took it out of this brown paper bag and it said, lessons from the grandmothers. My black, <laughs> yes, my, the teachings of the Blackfoot grandmothers. So later I was speaking to Anita after the conference and a woman walked up to me. She was a local tribal woman. And she said to me, I've never met you. But this morning when I woke up, my grandmother said, you must take this to Denise Iwana today. She needs to have this book today. And she said, Denise, I hope I, I'm not offending you by giving this to you. I came to hear you speak. And I left it in the ladies' bathroom. And I'm so glad to find out that you did receive <laughs> it. So those are the kind of signs that come along. It could have been any sort of a thing, but here it was a book, uh, the teachings of the grandmothers, the Blackfoot traditions. Mm -hmm. And so it is tribal. It's tribal from my biological father's lineage. Okay. So to answer that, yes. Yeah. It's Thank always you. on my father's side. Okay. okay. Let's, let's ask, I was going to say, can we talk about when a spirit is redundant? You mean like your echo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that there? <laughs> Sorry. Every, it, just, when, it just now echoed. So if you could say that again. When a spirit is redundant, when a guide is redundant, when it throws you a message and you don't catch it, and then it gives you a sign and you don't pick it up, <laughs> <laughs> and then it throws you a lightning bolt and you dodge. Or, you know, you're in the car, you don't read the sign, you know, they are relentless. They're very diligent and they're so loyal. And 
they want you to get it. Yes. So in our learning curve, they are patient until they do trip you and go, you want to read the book that's been plopped in your lap, but you want to give it to your neighbor and say, this must be yours. You know, so there's that place of humor. I find that spirituality can be very humorous at times, especially uh -huh. when we are um, uh, in fear of or not believing that we're even worthy of being talked to, or, you know, what are some of the things that bring up the doubt that disqualify our relationship with our spirits? Oh, good question. When you don't want to hear, you don't want to believe, or you don't feel you're good enough to receive. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> All right. So when I when I was gifted my medicine dress, it was in 1999. It was in a dream, one of those dreams, you know, and it took me until 2004 or five to bring it into the physical world because I kept saying, I'm not worthy. How, who, who am I? Why? Why? Why me? <laughs> Because there's there's this responsibility when you pick that medicine up, and that means that you have to live a certain kind of life. And I didn't know if I wanted to do that. One, did I want to do it? Two, did I want to be responsible for it? <laughs> and um, I do kind of not do very well when people tell me what to do. <laughs> so, so, you know. <laughs> so... Um, it took me a while. It took me a while to get through all of that stuff. And um, that in itself was the journey. Was the journey and learning about myself. And learning that sometimes you just have to step past the fear of being wrong. And and do it. Right. Literally taking a leap into obligated. yourself. I'm sorry, say that yeah, again. The fear of being, or the fear of being obligated. Yes. Uh, but you know what? It really had, we're going to go back to that trust thing. I think looking back at that now, knowing what I know now, it really was about trusting myself. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and being okay with who I came in to be, who I am. And so that was... Um, the guides that brought me that one, I tell you what, the one guy is really good looking. <laughs> it's like, yes. He's a little guy. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and the thing is, is that um, I met so many of them. And that was the first time I met the great mother. Mm. That was the first time. And I remember the last thing that, that I, when I said to her was, because I had tears in my eyes and I said, I'm so sorry. It's taken me so long to get to you, to come to you. And she said, child, it doesn't, the, the length of time doesn't matter. What matters is you're here now. We've got things to do. So, you know, it, it's, um, I talk about it like it just happened last night because that's the way it feels. It feels that way. And when I think about her, I get all kind of mushy inside, you know, because <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever had anybody living or not look at me with unconditional love. How long ago was it? 99. Was it Hi, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bobby. It was 1999. Oh, 99. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, our guides to me, they love us so much that they want to be persistent. They want to bring it to it to us. If I didn't see it one time, they're going to do it another way. They're going to keep showing me the same triple numbers, different <laughs> places. <laughs> you know, eventually she's not, she's actually going to pay attention to it. Yeah. Bobby just said patience and persistence. Yeah. And pure love. And pure they love. want us to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are there's there's a there's a current that's happening right now 
and I'm sure we all feel it because it's so present that we, especially when you were here, Danny, we were talking about how thin the veil is. Mm -hmm. And there are things that are happening almost with a spontaneity that it's, I don't know if I'm asking them or if I'm talking to them or if it's just like talking to Bobby, it's like, gee, where is that? And it's like, I don't have a clue where it is. And it just kind of flies down into my hand. Or what can we do? And just something happens. There's a speeding up. And so there's a, um, I, I believe in my heart that there's a necessity in this figure eight of our side, their side, the side, in the middle, all sides want some communal acknowledgement mm -hmm. that we all exist in the same realm now. It's not just we have to die or they have to be alive or they have to be un, you know, out of, uh, disincarnated or it, it, they're, they're, it's almost like it just, it's translucent with inside of us. See that? Translucent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, so there's that. And I and I love the dream time also that you're talking about, Neshi, because I believe so many clients are telling me, well, I had a dream. And then I listened to the dream and it was like, that was no dream. That was an out of the body experience. That was a journey. That was a traveler. And that was a pickup, yep. you know, that everybody's floating on another wave or mm -hmm. multiple waves. And um, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That so, was a good one. Yeah. So pay attention to what's happening, not even just hope something's happening. Pay yeah. attention to what is happening. I did a wedding for a very deep beloved this weekend and our dear, dear friend Pam Howard passed away and I did the wedding for her son this weekend. And in acknowledging her in my head, I kept thinking, wouldn't it be great if a butterfly just came through right now? And it was so cute because the butterfly came through right now. And it was like one of those moments like, I could have said that she could have been in a butterfly and looked really grand. <laughs> you know, timing is everything. <laughs> I mean, it was like, now wait a minute, I could have like shocked the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, but it was right there, you know, because the sweetness <laughs> of feeling her was oh, you do, a butterfly. No, no. And, but it wasn't something I said. And I want everybody to be able to hear that too, that here I am doing a wedding and they asked me to speak about her and I speak about her and the butterfly oh, it gives me the tingles. The butterfly is in my head, but I don't say it because the edit is it's not even an edit. It's just, it's the thought that's happening while I'm speaking. Mm. And the generosity is there yeah. comes the butterfly. Yeah. And they all notice the butterfly. So it's not something I had to say, oh, look yeah, for the that. butterfly. Her yeah. presence was so present, they felt she was present. It wasn't projected. It, was it wasn't projected, right. Yeah. It just happened. Yeah. Boom. That I didn't have to say, look for the butterfly. It was like, I'll be right there. Okay. Now, Tina is saying something in the chat room that I just think we need to acknowledge. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> you got to put those fancy glasses <laughs> back on. <laughs> Tina's on it. She says, sometimes it's the ability to go further with spirit. So you see the signs and then you have to go deeper with them. I am a real baby with this. So I don't, don't always know what to do. Cute picture, Tina. Yeah. So your practice. Well, she's saying something that a lot of people feel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. does take practice. It takes, it takes the diligence to stay available to learn. It takes the courtesy to self to be open to, I'm, I'm a, I, I, want, I want to do what a baby horse does when it does a, its first socialization with other horses. It, 
first of all, the mother has look marks and it goes, it's a baby and I'm its mother. <laughs> so love it or talk to me. And that's kind of what the masters do as spirits, Tina. But the baby horse goes, baby. And it's its mouth does it. I mean, baby. It just, it just, it just does this shiver as it offers the pheromones, as it offers the information. And it's so wonderful. So I want you to be able to deeply enjoy your experience of your baby steps. And even when you're talking to spirit, I'm a baby. And be, 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 be excited about it. She's also a first-time listener. Yay. Oh, my God. And she's saying, I'm glad I tuned you. in. We're glad you did, too, Tina. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I finally. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hmm. I love, this, I love this. I love this conversation. I love this conversation. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tina. Bobby wants to say something. Hey, Tina. It's it's big stuff. It's big stuff. Baby steps. It's really cool, though. Just trust. Just trust. That's very sweet, Bobby. Just trust. Can you hear? Trust us? in yourself. No. Trust mm -hmm. the universe. It'll come to you. It'll come to you. It just. Baby steps, but just, well, you just got to believe. And we go back to trust. Yeah. Yeah. Dana, when, when you're, when you're seeing spirit and we're having this conversation, cause I'm sure that the room's quite full. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're talking about trust and really we're talking about trusting ourselves, do, how do they feel about that? Do they have anything that they say about that? Well, yes, because it is about trust and it's about helping to eradicate self-doubt, whether it's self-doubt that's been implanted by religion, education, lack of family, friends, and bringing us right down, boiling us right down to the fact that we are spiritual beings. We are these magnificent star beings in flesh and bone. And we've all come here with gifts and talents. And I believe that all of them are trying to keep us on the path to self-realization or to the fullest realization of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And with the trust and the lack of self-doubt comes a beautiful relationship that sometimes is so loud and so astounding that it takes our breath away. And Chue, I know that you're in the chat room right now and you'll remember this a couple of years ago uh, when we were inside Inipi and all of a sudden the whole Inipi started to shake and it was shaking. And Guy had brought those Chanupas um, that were being, uh, that he created the, the stems for me. And he laid those into the NEP and the stem and the bowl were separate, but he laid the three in there. And I was sitting next to you on my right side and to a Della on my left side. And a wind came inside that NEP and it came around to me and it whispered something to me. And spirit said, ask Della when you're done. Well, I, I had asked my grandmothers to come in and bless those Chanupas. Well, when the flap went up, Del, you remembered that those Chanupas were put together. The spirits put them together. They hooked them up. And later when we were all cooking, I, I asked Della if I could have a minute. And I reiterated to her what it was that the spirits had said to me. I said, what does that mean, Della? And she said, what they said to you is your grandmothers are here. Mm -hmm. And that wind that we felt came come through, those were your grandmothers came in. That's what they were telling you in the Lakota language. Mm -hmm. And then those pipes were put together. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of experiences that sometimes you can't uh, tell another person. They can't necessarily appreciate it if they were not there. But the reason I'm telling you, Tina, this and everybody, Sandy has had these experiences. Neshi has had these experiences. The more that we gain this relationship of trust, 
whether it's with our relatives who have passed, our guardian angels, uh, Yeshua, Buddha, whatever it is that our soul longs to commune with, this is how beautiful and brilliant and vibrant the relationship becomes. And it helps to propel us forward on our spiritual path. And so what I wanted to ask you ladies, in addition to this, is how do we know that we're being visited by a guide that is um, beneficial mm -hmm. versus a guide maybe that might be a little bit hanky or maybe we really don't want to dance with that spirit? Mm -hmm. Because that's also a valid question in this pantheon of conversation. Absolutely it is. I'm going to let, 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 let's do Sandy first because this yeah. is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because the spirit world in many ways is no different than the human world in you get to meet a lot of people, but you get to sort through who is yours and who you like and who you don't like, um, who comes in for a visit and who you escort out or who um, you feel um, you want to really endear yourself to or who's here for the moment. And that's all that there is. So there is that place of just because it's a spirit. And I am very serious about, serious about this. Just because there is spirit shows up and says, I'm a spirit and I'm a guide, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to accept it. It doesn't mean there's a one for you. And therefore, there is that beautiful place of when a loving spirit comes to you to truly filter allow you to experience the interaction like anything else. There are people that you know that instantly you're connected to. There are people that you take your time with. There are people that you um, even have question about and then you find out later on, oh, how did I, how did, I, I'm going to use this one example. I was friends with a husband of a friend of mine when I first met her husband, and then I finally met her, but I was still friends with the husband. He was like my brother. And then one day we're driving on the roads of Santa, Santa Fe, and I looked at her and I said, when did we become best friends? It was like, it just happened. It dropped in. And so there's that place of, filtering. let, Bobby says filtering, let the energy that you feel mm -hmm is brought to you to develop a relationship so that you feel comfortable and confident that you belong with it. You might get it wrong a few times. Yeah, Bobby says you may get it wrong a few it's times. Human nature. So that, that is human nature. And therefore... Um, Just trust that the universe is gonna work its way. <coughs> Bobby's joined the show. He says, yeah, we need to see. <laughs> over to Bobby so everybody can see you. Yeah, and Bobby, you're going to have to come into the frame then. Yeah. So people know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> I'm lying on a He's all curled rug up. Aww. on the floor in his office. He's all curled up. And there. I'm just listening. And I'm so sorry that I'm. No, no, no. I yeah. just don't want it to be a disembodied <laughs> voice. Yeah. I'm okay. starting to relive things through this conversation. <laughs> so, no, but but it's it's beautiful because it's my wife's show. Well, no, no, no. Let me say this. Bobby was introduced to spirits as a young boy, and it wasn't always nice. So as children, you know, we're talking to adults here. We're having an adult conversation with lots of adults. And, you know, we're it is important to say that we experience spirits on so many levels as a child that we're frightened by them or we're not familiar with them or we don't necessarily know what to do with them. Yeah. And it can be some scary shit. It's, yes, yes. It can. yes, it can. So, you know, how do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that really it also goes back to boundaries because we're also learning how to set those, just not those in the physical world but also in the spiritual world. And if we're having issues with our boundaries in the physical world, chances are we're having problems with our boundaries in the spiritual world too, as above, so below, right? As within, yes. so without. So, you know, it's, it gives us an opportunity to be able to learn how to do that. And, and Sandy, you said it earlier, it's about the feeling. 
It's about feelings. And so when you're with this guide, how do you feel? Do you feel loved? Do you feel supported? Do you feel, are they kind? Mm -hmm. or do, do, do they, do they encourage you um, or do they belittle you? Do they try to scare you? If they're, if they're not there for your highest good, then you have to learn how to say you need to leave and leave now. And so, you know, we, we're given that opportunity to be able to do that. And you're right. Nobody hardly ever teaches you how to do that, whether it's with spirits or whether it's with people that you can actually see, feel, and hear. Humans. Yeah. It's all trial well, and error. Right. What about the, the stranger danger thing, right? Back in the, what is that, 80s, 70s, 80s? Stranger mm -hmm. danger? Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's my guideline anyway. That's my boundary. If they're not nice... If they're not here for, for my for my highest good and best interest and they're not loving, no. There's got to be someone else. And I also believe that we sit down and all of them, we sit down <laughs> and we think, and it's like, I want everybody on the same page. I don't want to get told, go over here and do this. And another one says, go over here and do that. <laughs> and I, I want to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, but there, but there also are, and I think it's very important to say that there are guides and messengers and spirits and angels and entities that are assigned di different quadrants of our lives mm. or within a day, maybe different issues that our lives are taking mm -hmm. or different activities that we're involved with. So, you know, if you have, guides that are aligned with certain things that are specific to you in this guide, then they may not go into other areas is it with you. Is so easy or is it a test? Are we supposed to figure something out? Are we supposed to pay attention or they're just supposed to walk into our lives and go, I'm your guide. It's going to be perfect from here. That'd be nice. <laughs> Bob, Dana's waving at you. Sorry, <laughs> my no, no, sidekick. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's Jennifer Holtz in the in the in the chat room, and I was just showing. I'm waiting to Jennifer. Hi, yeah. Jennifer. Oh, okay. That would be so wonderful. Yeah, it's that not everything just shows up and says, "Hi, I'm your guy." When what I would like to say about one thing here is, um, when I was a officially introduced to my guides it was through a course that was teaching guides mm. when i officially met my guides i was a child without any interpretation other than is it the boogeyman is it you know is it a, an angel it does you know right. is it from church or is it from the backyard did you bring something in is it from the cemetery so they're always in our lives. And mm -hmm. it's amazing. Where do we, I mean, for me to be spooked in a cemetery, that was official. To be spooked at night, that was official. But when I was educated about them, then I felt safer. Mm -hmm. But when it was random, I didn't, I didn't necessarily always know what was happening. Yeah. In my youth, you know, it, um, and, and I'm also talking about a time when it wasn't so available mm -hmm. in this day and age. It is available to find out. That's right. It's available. There's a lot of education. I see a little blurb here. Yeah. Jocelyn, Jocelyn has something that in the chat room that I thought was really, we really need to, to take a look at. She says, what would you call a black shadow? My daughter is getting visited by black shadows. I told her to tell it to leave. Well, for myself, uh, when a presence is visiting or passing through or just checking our light, you know, wanting to touch us and tap into to our who we are, I use the same litmus test. How does it feel to me? And if that black shadow figure feels as though it's something that is malfeasant 
or something that is uh, unholy, I would command it to leave. Mm -hmm. I would command it to leave. And it's just as, mostly it's just as easy. If it's not that easy, then you need to call in somebody who can help you with that. The bigger gun. The bigger, gun. The bigger guns. And, uh, you know, as we were all saying earlier, not everything in the unseen world is the Archangel St. Michael, right? And his legions of light, because it's a spectrum of light. Mm -hmm. in the seen and unseen world. And so we have to trust our gut instinct. And sometimes, sometimes it can appear as um, a very small child looking absolutely precious and adorable. So on the outside looking like a precious child, but there's something wrong with the feeling that you get. Trust your feeling. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut. Yes. Lots of disguises are worn. There's, There's a, place a place for me that I would like to share that when I saw shadows, sometimes it was a shimmer or something that squilled, you know, kind of scurried across the floor. Mm -hmm. And as a child waking up to it, all I could do is scream mm -hmm. because I didn't know. And that screaming dispersed it. And what I was screaming for was for my parents to come and rescue me. You know, so I'm talking about um, from third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, um, even younger. And sometimes um, they are uh, lower vibrations that are just kind of like coming through and sometimes animals that are walking through. So it's not always a mal, a, a negativity. It's, it's, it's just something that's kind of walking through. Mm -hmm. um, the very first night that I moved into this house and slept, very first night, um, a shadow jumped on my bed and was like doing this on the side of the bed. And it was like, holy shit. And the next morning I realized, oh my God, um, we moved into wow. the door, a house where dogs used to live. And one <laughs> of the dogs passed away and it was trying to jump on the bed. It was like, hey, how you doing? Let me on. <laughs> and another was, same thing pounding up. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and another one was on a father's <laughs> bed. Yeah. And it was like pounding up. Um, when I also moved into a house in New Mexico, very first night, I was so happy to be there and a shadow, I woke up to a shadow with its hands around my neck and it was, I mean, I bolted up and what I did was like, I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good ones. And it is a shadow that has been seen by others. And it was, it was a spirit that was devoted to the land. Mm. And it wanted to make sure that I did not have malintent to it. Mm -hmm. So you also want to identify yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was asking, who the hell are you? And it was like, I'm Sandy, I'm Sandy. It's like, okay, okay. And, and, and it guarded me from that point on. And one other little story I'll tell you is that I was, I was, I, was, I went back home. I separated from my first husband and I went back home. I was laying in a different room that I ever slept in. So I was not familiar with this room, nor was this room familiar with me in my childhood home. And I woke up, eyes wide open, and looked up, and there was a being literally leaning over me, kind of like, oh, what are you doing here? Is this, is this where you belong? What, 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 what's... And I looked at, it, looked at me, and it was like, what are you even doing back, you know? And I thought, I'm looking at something looking at me. And it's that pause. It's like, I'm really looking. And it was a shadow. And I screamed and it disappeared like in Star Trek. You know. So there's lots and lots of things. And before you banish it, I would ask what it is. But if you don't have the temperament to it, ask it to come back later. Bring a little more light. When anything has been dark, because I was raised Catholic, I have the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost at my beck and call, the name of Jesus cast out. Or I, I put on music. Music disperses this energy. Or a nightlight. Yes. You know, you can or, or light a candle. So you can, you can eliminate the shadow by bringing in the light. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you really do. 
helped you. So there's lots of things you can do because sometimes young spirits want to come to somebody that's learning because they want to learn too. So well, it gives me the goosebumps. So something something sweet is is happening and just ask it to gather more light. It could be dark. It could be dark. But it could be light. It could be light. <laughs> well, Jocelyn is saying thank you, Sandy. That's say it again. Jocelyn was saying thank you. To You're you. welcome, Jocelyn. You're welcome. Hmm. How are we doing on time? Well, let me look. Oh, we have 15 minutes yet. Perfect. 15 minutes for another another segue into something else. Mm -hmm. Spirit guides. I think it really does all come down to just paying attention to your gut instinct. And uh, it's no different than if somebody comes knocking on your front door. Do you just let every Tom, Dick, and Harry in your front door? Or do you say, who are you? Why are you here? Um, I'm not available now. You can say, I'm not available now. Can you come back? Mm -hmm. Or you can shut the door and say, no, thank you. And people ask me all the time. The three of us hear this all the time. Here's an example. When I was younger, I could see spirits and I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. And so I shut those gifts and abilities down. But now that I'm 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, I'd like to be visited by them again. Is that possible? And if so, how do I do that? How do I turn the dial back on? I'm belching. So you're bringing up something really good. <laughs> yeah. I've changed my mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but do you, does it, is it really true that you turn them off? Is that really true? Well, some people say that, you know, ever since I said, I never want to do this again, as long as I live, I never want to see another spirit. As long as I live, spirit took them to their word. Okay. And said, okay, as long as you live in this physical body, bye. And how do you turn it back on? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's it's kind of like wax on, wax off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you may shut the third eye down. I never want to see it. So you may shut down the third eye. It's mm -hmm. the same thing when you say it, I'll never want to love again. You shut down your heart. Um, when you say I never want to feel again, you turn off your emotions. And so if it's too overstimulating, if it's too sensational and you can't handle the wattage, it's a great idea to turn it down because nobody should be driven insane mm -hmm. by I have to, I have to, I have to, I should. Right. If you can't, I am demanding you to turn it down so you do not become um trauma to being overexposed you get sunburn too cold you get you get frostbite so your exposure is to your own ability and yes calibrate it and when you shut the door spirit's always on the other side mm -hmm. it's always there mm -hmm. so it's your choice to open it up again it's choice mm -hmm. to open it up or at least have it you know like the blinds here Open up, <laughs> or like, oh, oh, there you are. Okay, okay, and and that you may be, you may be um, more qualified because of your experiences and what you've acquired as wisdom, and even what your karma is doing. We have to bring that in too. That mm. you're now karmically aligned with opening up to it. Mm -hmm. Or even karmically aligned to changing your mind and turning it off. We all know people that said, I'm done with that. I've, I've, I've built my whole life on it. And I've just changed my mind. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yep. Everybody's allowed to have a, a direction. You can change the car wherever you're going. Well, and that's the beauty of the gift of free will, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And I, I, you, this is how I used to explain it. Except... I had to kind of update it because it's kind of like having a, uh, a radio, you know, you can, you can turn it on and have the kind of music that you want, or you can turn it on. You're driving through someplace you don't 
aren't familiar with and you're trying to find a, a station of some sort. That's in the old days when you actually had to do it manually or push the buttons, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> to yeah. find <laughs> and then you find it and you have to kind of go back and forth a little bit <laughs> to tune yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're right because the antenna, our antennas are, you can, you can manipulate them. You can, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll, you know, and, and maybe we even get to choose, you know, the channel that we want to listen to. Mm -hmm. Right. We can, I, I need to be very honest. I just had a full blown memory. So this is back to that. Um, what do you do when the shadows are there? I was given a small dungaree covered Bible by somebody on a bus when driving from Montreal down to Stanford, Connecticut. They gave me their Bible. And I am not a Bible person, um, but I took that dungaree Bible and I would sleep with it if things were too spooky. Mm -hmm. I also had rosary beads. I would sleep with them. I would bring some object that I felt safe with to my heart and sleep with it. So if you have something of comfort and the shadow comes or something dark comes, bring that comfort to you, that guardian, that object, that totem, that um, symbol of protection, you know, in Practical Witch, the star, it's like, it's it's your it's your image it's your shield mm -hmm. so there are many things that you could bring your blanket you know going under the covers is not a foreign <laughs> <laughs> out of sight out of mind so grab that bible, booby <laughs> i slept with that bible for i mean it would i hold it i'd pray and sometimes you have to back things up because they need to be backed up so i don't want to you know use your tools yeah, because Margaret's saying, kind of saying, ask the question, and you just answered it. Um, she's asking, can you interact with them through your protection? Yes. Yes. And you bring your protection on full force. Mm -hmm. And Rob had a question here. I, it, there, it's scrolling so fast that I have to. There's a question here. Um, I'm not, well, it's more of a statement. Rob Kendall. He says, will spirit really condemn a soul for a lifetime for a decision? Made not only in ignorance, but under duress. No. No. That's sweet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, Rob, that would be no. <laughs> <laughs> Make that clear. No. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Our humanness is so needed to be experienced. And spirit has a generosity to it that understands how human we are. Mm -hmm. And if we don't screw up, we'd never learn a thing. <laughs> then, why, then, why, then why would we choose to even be here, right? If we weren't going to, because some of us learn better by tri trial and error. Mm -hmm. One, of, them. One of the best ways I've ever learned to stand up was after I fell down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. What's my choice? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Hey, Lady Hawk. Hey. Oh my God, Lady Hawk! Hi, baby. Ah. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes our guides do step in. Bobby had a great point earlier when he was chit chatting from his spot there on the floor. Sometimes our guides will come in, and they're here to challenge us. So that we can full, you know, further realize our gifts and talents. And sometimes it can be frightening mm -hmm. what they challenge us to do, what they challenge us when they show us things in the other realms. It can be very challenging because maybe it's things in our humanness we're not used to or we're uncomfortable with. And that also comes down to discernment. Mm -hmm. Why are you showing me these things? You're scaring me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. And I know that you're trying to teach me something and to bring me along. Uh, and it's okay to have those same emotions, no different than if we have somebody in our life that is trying to teach us something that pushes us out of our comfort zone, out of our nice <laughs> little nest 
We also have guides that are with us to challenge us in order to bring us to our fullness. <coughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, either we're up for the challenge, we're not up for the challenge, or we can take time to think about it. It doesn't have to be an instantane instantaneous uh, answer to that. And our karma has such divine guidance here to bring us to when is it the time to be in the dark side of the shadow? Mm -hmm. When's it time to be in the night of the soul? Mm -hmm. um, when's it to, in the, the, the starlight? When's it supposed to be in the sunlight? And, you know, we're not free from having to have hardship. Right. None of us are. Mm -hmm. We are not free from having to encounter. Um, I mean, look at the world right now. There are people running for their lives from the fires in California. There are people running from their lives from gunshots from their neighbors. There, you know, this this is, um, and it doesn't mean it's only this time. Um, the world is really a very wild place. Yeah. Very wild. And so the human experience is part of the... Um, greatest force of being involved with spiritual interaction mm. you know it's sure. uh, it's a wild thing true see sandy um we have a lot of first time listeners audi in the audience tonight Hello. and um if if you could give us um your definition of karma because i think that's really important that um so we could put that framework around what you just said okay yeah. So for me, karma is that space of the collective, of the yin and the yang. I come in and I have experiences and I start encountering my relationships with people or even myself and my deeds. And it is the school of humanity and spirituality. So it's that place of I do and then there's the counter of it. There is the place of integrity, of learning, of shifting and shaping. And if I do on to someone, does someone do on to me? If I am bad to somebody or I make a promise to somebody, the karma is, you know, I'm going to have to come around and re-look re at this. Um, and so there's that beautiful place of karma where there is justice in time. But there's no necessarily given time to when that will happen. But it will happen. And if someone's in my life, I believe that our relationship is karma. I am dealing with people who I know I have experienced life with from other times that I was alive. And therefore, it may not be a consecutive life, but a life that jumps centuries or mm -hmm. um, eons or continents. And in this particular life, it's very fascinating that I have karma with people all over the world because I, even though I'm one of seven children, am the one child that has ricocheted all over the planet to experience my life mm -hmm. rather than live in one town or mm -hmm. one area. And my karma is global and my karma to collect these people or to meet these people is profound and I believe that there's a lot of good in my life that I'm gathering. And there's a lot of things that I have done that I'm not necessarily proud of, but it's also part of my character that I am gracing people with. I owe you this, or I need to bless you. or I need to take that off of you that I have done. So it's accountability. I'm not always the nicest person in the world. And I'm not supposed to be. I'm sure that in the spectrum of karma, you get to find out how bad you can be and how good you can be. And you got lots of time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Lily's in the house, you know. Hi, baby. She said, love the conversation. You ladies rock. And Wait, Bobby. Hi. Thank you. Lily. Lily. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> Oh, too fun. Too fun. Well, ladies, we're at 829. Wow. Wow is right. That was fast. It does. 
it does. So how about last words? What do we want to share with, with our audience for the last minute? Well, I would like to leave everyone with uh, always trust your instinct, <coughs> trust your intuition, and trust what you, your heart tells you to be true uh, with interacting with spirit. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nishi? No, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say absolutely ditto on what uh, Dana is saying and also to be daring, you know, be willing to listen and say yes and be willing to explore, get good teachers, read good information, um, explore from your intelligence and from your willingness to be curious and bring your heart to it. And know that spirit is here to love us. And the good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful, the charismatic, um, it's all there. It's its a huge adventure and it's worth experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would, I would say that we're blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of thousands of souls who would really like to be right where we are. And they, they have their, their hand up saying, I want to go too. I want to be there too. And so they want to be in a physical body to have this experience. And spirit loves us so much that, that we have all of these helpers, mm -hmm. all of these helpers. And what we need to do is remember to ask them for help and to have that conversation have a conversation with them and find out how much they really love you because they do. Yes. And, and they also help us to learn how to discern because mm -hmm. that's part of our, our, our lesson here too, is to learn how to discern. Yes. And, uh, and I tell you what, as Sandy said, this is a wild ride. I'm so glad to be here with all of you to, to enjoy it and to say, Holy cow, did you see that? <laughs> so, um, with that, you know, we're a monthly show for Walking with Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, third Wednesday of every month, and we start at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, so next month, you'll be seeing us back here again. We don't know what the topic's going to be. And I'll be a year older. <laughs> <gasps> really? Yeah. Wow. I'll be 70. Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. Janice is saying, love this new format and really appreciate your perseverance in oh, getting this to happen for all of your listeners. Thank you. You're welcome, Janice. Thank you so much. And Jocelyn is saying, thank you, ladies. Great conversation. Thank, thank you. you all for joining thank us. You, yeah. So with that, um, I don't know. You go blessings be. I go blessings be. All right. Blessings be. <laughs> Thank you, Lily, for getting me connected. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Everyone.